Hi there, my name is Michael and uh, I wanted to make a little video here talking about 70s sci-fi art books. Kind of an obscure topic, I know, but uh, back in the late 1970s into the late 1980s, there seemed to be this proliferation of books filled with magnificent science fiction and fantasy art from the era, and it's really my favorite expression of the artistic medium related to science fiction. And sci-fi art has always been amazing, and since uh, I would say maybe the uh, turn of the 20th century, it has been uh, an essential part of science fiction on magazine covers and elsewhere, just to express the uh, the world of sci-fi books and our understanding of how science fiction worlds can be made. And I think they just have this incredible quality. They're, they're very evocative because they get you thinking about these worlds. And a bunch of these books were released back then that had some text with them, but really just staring at the amazing sci-fi art of this era, which is my absolute favorite. I think it conveys is the best. It has a, a certain amount of sophistication to it, and there's a lot of magnificence to the huge alien worlds and spaceships and scenes of galaxies and all sorts of wonderful science fiction and space-related objects and aliens and weapons and creatures and costumes and it, it, everything about it just makes me... it really gets my gears turning about this sci-fi world. Just these little pictures here are amazing. This uh, sort of acrylic art would be, which became really popular around this time. They've long been a part of my uh, experience with science fiction as I had a number of them in my house growing up and uh, I've collected more of them since then but they really just define for me a lot of how science fiction is supposed to look and just uh, provided this incredible catalyst moment for uh, becoming interested in science fiction and imagining what those worlds are like. I'm, I'm a much more visual rather than uh, language based person so seeing a magnificent image speaks more than a thousand words for me on how these science fiction worlds should look. And I just wanted to show them to you and uh, try to convey some of my awe and wonder. First up is Barlow's Guide to Extraterrestrials. And this was written by Wayne Douglas Barlow. And it actually has a foreword by the Hildebrandt brothers who are amazing fantasy and science fiction artists. He's taken a bunch of aliens, a bunch of science fiction creatures from a variety of different sci-fi books like Dune and Solaris, just to name a few, and visualized them, and I think that's very important because it's sometimes hard for me to imagine uh, the description of this strange alien monstrosity that I'm supposed to be picturing in my head, so having this visual handicap there, this crutch for me, it really helps me to understand what they're supposed to look like. And uh, I've actually used these while reading some of the books mentioned within, and he gives like a little um, almost monster manual sort of bestiary-like guide to a bunch of these creatures, like the, uh, the puppeteers from Larry Niven's Ring World world and a bunch of other bizarre monsters and I just think it's a it's a really incredible book. I love the artwork. I love his visual invention and how well he's designed so many of these things. I, I think it just looks incredible and I love all the little detail he's put in here of all of these uh, weird little creatures and the uh, sort of the data that he's put around them as if they're actually real. Next up is the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction and unfortunately I, I don't really have the cover for this one and these are sort of 40 plus year old books so they don't look as magnificent as they did when they first came out. And I think this has some great science fiction art, and it, it includes, it, it's not exactly an encyclopedia, that, that, that's a little bit of a misnomer. It's a collection of essays by science fiction authors and critics about the various facets of science fiction over the years, such, such as its origins, the early pulp magazine days, film experiences with science fiction, various worlds, creatures, the concept of androids and aliens that science fiction has looked at, concepts of gender and various different people and how the human race evolves and changes over time in science fiction, how we change in our view of science fiction, and, and you know, and th this came out I think in 1978, so it's sort of taken up to that era. I, I really don't care for science fiction after like the mid-80s. After cyberpunk, that was really the last time where I really was interested in virtually anything science fiction related. Before then, from the 50s, 60s, and 70s in particular, I could just read dozens and dozens of novels and short stories, but, but after that it sort of began to dim on me. And, as, as, as a genre, and I really just couldn't get into it, and I think part of it, at least, was that the covers to science fiction novels and what you would see occasionally in magazines, although those had mostly died by that point, the art really wasn't as evocative or interesting. It was this weird, especially in the 90s, like, non-representational art that I think looked pretty bad. I really didn't enjoy that. I, I, I prefer the old-fashioned, well, I guess now old-fashioned, but then ultra-modern, late 70s-era sci-fi art. There's a, there's a cool tank here with these soldiers coming out of it, and I think that looks amazing. 
amazing. And it has all of the old fashioned style still present from the 1950s and 60s, but it's modernized into the more countercultural era from the late 60s into the 70s. And this book just has a lot of great information about science fiction that you can learn about and incredible pictures in it too. Next up is The New Visions, a collection of modern science fiction art. And there's actually an introduction by the famed sci-fi author Frederick Hole in here. And this one offers biographical data, just a short paragraph or two, about each of the authors that it mentions from back in the day. And it's pretty interesting to look into their lives and careers at the time and see some representations of their art of some of the most famous sci-fi novels of the day. And I, again, one, I think that the art from this era is, again, just amazing. There's something about the brightness and crispness of the color. There's a stainless steel rat wants you by Harry Harrison, a really funny series he did. And, uh, I, you know, there's just something about the way that they look that I think is, um, it really makes me want to go out and start writing science fiction works myself. And all of the authors present here have their own distinct, unique style, but they were also clearly from their day. There's a bunch of artists, by the way, from outside of the United States and the United Kingdom. There's South American authors, continental European authors, and they all have their own unique little look at the world uh, of science fiction, and uh, I think it's fantastic. Next up is Tour of the Universe, and this is my favorite of all of these books. The Tour of the Universe series posits a sci-fi cruise ship in a way that these two Americans, a, a husband and wife, have won, and they go on this you know, galactic tour to a bunch of places, and the author takes a bunch of science fiction paintings from the era and creates sort of little stories to them. It's, you can read these little, like, excerpts of the diaries of the people going on the trip, but also you get little, um, you could look at them as sort of like short, short stories, like a little page or two of information about an alien race or a starship or some sort of weird event back in the ancient history of the cosmos that these aliens were involved with. And again, I think that the short, short fiction really works here. Some people have criticized the writing in this, but I, I like how little they give you. I like that we just get the picture and a tiny amount of data, like for instance, this one about the planet Neptune or Pluto, I think, and this weird scroll that was found down there that's supposedly part of this very um, almost a uh, protean from uh, the Mass Effect series creatures that supposedly are an ancient dead race that uh, that there are legends about throughout the galaxy that everyone uh, you know various races have and they're trying to figure out where this race was or if it's really here or what this mysterious religious text they left in these empty cities on Pluto were and if they had any interaction with human beings and uh, I think that the variety is pretty good here there's a weird militaristic culture there's this culture like here called the uh, the Chicksta that are weird arachnid creatures, but it's not just the description of this arachnid race in this bestiary-like sense. They also go at great length to discuss the strange supernatural theological implications on the planet of the Chicksta, because apparently they contacted their own deity, or he manifested himself on the planet and they had to leave and construct their own planet somewhere else. It's a fascinating concept, and again, I like that little short, short story of just a page or two of information about this group instead of just, you know, a, a pretty a standard narrative. We just get sort of a snapshot of these guys. I, I kind of like this these uh, space trooper guys type here with these uh, these blaster weapons. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, there's also a really cool image of a gigantic tank at one section here that they're supposed to be looking at, and that looks pretty amazing as well. There's an incredible amount of invention here. I, I This is probably my favorite story of anything in here called Tomb World, and he's taken this painting and decided to transform it into this magnificent story about an ancient extragalactic creature that sort of exists on this world and sends its consciousness out to other people and it draws millions of people from races over the past you know few hundred thousand years to this planet where it's sort of like consciousness still exists within the planet so it's sort of like the tomb for this creature but millions of races across the galaxy are drawn to the planet in order to use it as a repository for their own dead so that's a really fascinating concept that I really enjoyed. Space Wreck is another one of the best ones. It's part of the Terran Trade Authority series, which was a bunch of really cool books all in the same fashion of sort of artwork with short, short stories around them. And this was actually made into a pen and paper RPG.
RPG at one time, and it was actually pretty interesting. I've, I've never actually played it myself, but it looks pretty cool. I'd like to get it one day. And the Terran Trade Authority has this sort of united narrative universe that the author keeps going back to, and it's interesting to kind of piece it together based on a little bits here and there that you have in each of the entries based on the paintings here. The one on the cover is especially cool with the sort of... Th th there's something exciting and evocative about a uh, crashed alien ship, about what was... you know, it forces you to think these things, like, what were these creatures doing here? Why did they get to this place? What? Why did they die? Did they, you know, am I in danger? Because they died somehow. Because these aliens obviously died, and now I'm here. Am I gonna die? I, I, I don't really know. It's, it's a... It forces you to think about these really interesting and exciting concepts about your own life, your own safety, about the safety of the universe, about if it's appropriate for us to go colonize other planets because how, how dangerous it is, and maybe we're gonna inevitably have to do it because we're going to have to go to other worlds at some point because we're destroying our own, but all of the destruction and violence that we're gonna meet there is pretty extreme. You know, there's going to have to be hundreds of thousands of dead people, at least, during our colonization of other worlds, and the short, short stories are kind of ominous and frightening because they describe the extreme conditions that cause these people to die and the incredible violence that they suffered by weird creatures or diseases or strange plant life. I love reading this late at night and just wondering about all of the mysteries going on in uh, in this universe here. Next up we have Aliens in Space, and this one is part of the Galactic Encounter series. There's a bunch of these books, including Settlers in Space and a bunch of other stuff. It's, it's really pretty cool. This shows just a bunch of different planets and, you know, gives a little biographical information about the creatures and the people that live there based on these wonderful science fiction paintings of odd monsters and cities, and it's it's incredible because it's doing what I think any sci-fi fan does. When they see these pictures, you don't just go, wow, that's a neat picture of a robot. You come up with this, in this entire backstory, and it's a part of cre the creative process that I engage in anyway when I see these pictures. I start imagining who these people are, where they are. I, you know, I create these elaborate sort of lore around it, and that's what the books are doing, and it's fun to sort of jump off from there and find out where you would go and decide who these creatures are and why they're there. Are these good or bad creatures that they're about to go to war? What are these? They, there's a picture of Cthulhu in here that looks pretty cool. I, I especially love one of these pictures of a, a sunken pyramid at the bottom of an ocean at a, a planet called Aquatica. And you wonder who built that pyramid and you can sort of create that and in your head and, you know, make this sort of world on your own. And, if, and as always, the pictures are just magnificent. I think they really, really did an amazing job with a variety of different authors here. This incredible pyramid shot is is great here. Uh, you know, you don't really think of submarines and underwater exploration as being part of uh, science fiction too often, but they did an incredible job here with expanding upon these pictures, and it's fun just to look at the painting sometimes. This next book is the most recent one that I got, Space Wars Worlds and Weapons, and I thought this was going to be a very different book than it is, but it's actually sort of a mixture of the encyclopedia style and the short, short story style, because the notes in the margins here about the pictures are actually in-universe, in-character science fiction writing, and yet the actual main bulk of the text, the articles on each section, are encyclopedic critical work discussing science fiction, so it's a mixture of the encyclopedia one and the short story writing. I think that was actually kind of interesting. I enjoyed that. It's not as comprehensive as the encyclopedia one, which I think is the best and I would recommend above all of these, but, uh, you know, it was still well written. I still enjoyed it. He goes on about various creatures, about fantasy worlds, aliens, uh, the various planets and spaceships ships that we go to and use, and yeah, it's just another incredible collection of this late 70s sort of acrylic era style art, where they mix together sort of the late 50s pulp style with a new modern feel and aesthetic to them. And I think that the fantasy section, I, you know, I think that the author did a pretty good job describing fantasy and science fiction here and some of the major themes that we run into. This book, I think, also came out in the late 1970s, and there's, as always, just a lot of beautiful, beautiful art in the background and some little interesting blurbs, you know, just paragraphs about some of this information. Just super short, short stories that I think were uh, actually pretty interesting. But anyway, uh, this was kind of a weird video because, I, you know, I don't know how many people are really interested in these things. I think that they are still amazing tools to use in order to uh, remain fascinated by science fiction, to get the gears going in your brain about sci-fi works and worlds and creatures, races, monsters, aliens, art, 
is vital, at least for me, in creating that sense of wonder and starting to imagine these worlds, probably more so even than the text itself in the books. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I would recommend you get some of these books if you're interested in science fiction. They are kind of expensive sometimes, but some of them are only like between 10 and $20, so that's not really, that's not that bad to be honest. It could be argued, of course, because we have the internet nowadays that you don't actually need to have these books, that you can just see these images, although I haven't been able to find absolutely every one of these pictures online, certainly not in the same quality, and probably thousands more images online that you can ever collect into these works, but I still think there's something special and important about having an actual physical copy, a real a book of these things that you can sit down and read rather than just being on your computer and looking at them. But anyway, please tell me in the comments below if you've ever heard of these books, if you've ever seen them, what you think of these books, if they were part of your childhood, if you enjoyed them, if you uh, had the same sense of wonder and awe at these books as I did when I was a kid, and still still do really as an adult. Please tell me your experiences with these books or if you maybe plan on getting them based on this recommendation or you never heard of them before and now you might be interested in them. And uh, please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos by me about various topics including science fiction, movies, television shows, video games that I love. And uh, yeah, my name is Michael. Thank you very much and have a good night.